The world today is conducting a giant unauthorized experiment with the climate, where we pump more and more gases that we know have the effect of warming the Earth into the atmosphere. We don't know exactly what the consequences will be. We have every reason to expect they'll be unpleasant. It's an experiment none of us would have agreed to conduct if we had any opportunity to vote on it. And the urgent question now is, can we stop the experiment at acceptable cost? In order to do that, we've got to sharply reduce emissions of global warming pollution into the atmosphere, starting with the burning of fossil fuels. I think if we were really sentient thinking individuals, we would revolt and say that this uh, modern consuming lifestyle is destroying things that took millions of years to develop on this planet and we're destroying it in just a few years and decades. And, 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 and really it's time for us to really re-examine what we're doing as a, as a society and as a culture and what is our relationship to our planet. You know, do, do we want to look at the planet as something we liquidate to make ourselves a little richer or is it you know, something that we want to make sure that we hand on into the future in some form that's similar to what we were handed. I think policymakers need to take this uh, issue seriously because we've only got a short amount of time to avoid some very major changes in the way that the world works. And those changes will have serious consequences for human survival and well-being. So I think if anything, um, we need to deal with these problems as a matter of urgency because that window will be opened for only a short period of time and it will be closed very soon. So if we don't get on with the solutions, we will set the earth on a course where actually much of humanity will suffer horribly. We need to be pursuing all cost-effective energy efficiency opportunities we can. We need to be introducing renewable energy at a dramatically higher rate. We need to shut down investments in conventional coal that simply vents its carbon pollution into the atmosphere. If we can put an end to this uniquely dangerous global climate experiment, there's every hope of a healthier planet, including healthier oceans, because less carbon pollution in the atmosphere reduces pressure on the oceans and on the climate. What we need to do is to take very stern action on the emissions of CO2 that are flooding the atmosphere right now. But we've also got to take greater care of these ecosystems as they go into a period in which they will be under pressure from global change. That means we've got to uh, reduce the overfishing, we've got to improve the water quality. Because like a hospital patient, if we treat them badly, they'll go downhill faster and we will not have a chance of bringing them back once we stabilize the climate. First of all, we've got to remove the linkage between utilities' financial health and the amount of electricity and natural gas they sell. We don't want them profiting from increased use and waste. You take that away and then you layer on it an incentive for helping people use energy more efficiently. And suddenly the more efficient course of action for the customer becomes the most profitable course of action for the utility. That's where we need to get. California's great achievement over the last 30 years has been to mobilize energy efficiency in buildings, equipment, using standards, incentives, working with the utility sector, so that over 30 years, our electricity use per person has stayed flat. The rest of the country is up almost 50%. Now, nobody believes we did that through self-sacrifice and self-denial in California. We did that through effective energy efficiency technology and policy, fully integrated, supportive utility system. We did it through things the rest of the country can easily do. If any, any of the models are right, then the problems we face now are not going to be easier to solve tomorrow. They're going to be harder to solve tomorrow. And if we can't figure out a way to solve the problem today, we are certainly not going to figure out how to solve it tomorrow. So today is the day. There is more than enough sun and wind untapped around the world to run the whole economy for as far out as the eye can imagine. That's not the real issue. Everyone will acknowledge that. The question is, can we get the stuff up and running at acceptable cost in time to get our carbon pollution down in, in, with the very challenging uh, time constraints that we face? We're at a moment where everything can come together in a way never before possible, but it hasn't happened yet. The Congress is going to have to pass the most aggressive and ambitious combined economic and environmental legislation in history. That will be the Global Warming Solutions Bill. As part of that bill, we're going to need dramatic new solutions in terms of better fuels for transportation, more efficient vehicles, better land use. There is a dramatic turning point which we've been waiting for for a generation. It's upon us. We've got better renewable energy technology ready to go head to head with fossil fuel and we've got a whole host of inexpensive energy efficiency options that can go themselves head to head with any form of electric generation, natural gas supply or transmission line additions. 
We haven't had this rich a portfolio of options, obviously, before, and we haven't had a mobilized Congress and administration that want to do something. All the ingredients are ready to get climate solutions moving on a scale never before seen, and we've got a 30-year track record now that shows that this stuff can work.